In this lesson, we are going to look at how a measurement can relate to another measurement. Now, before we do that, let's look at the definition of a measurement. Just a review, a measurement, like any measurement, it must have a number and a unit of measurement. And sometimes it would have the chemical, okay, or the substance that go along with it. So what about the number? The number could be anything. It could be any number, right? And of course, followed by the unit. And of course, the unit could be any unit. And what are some of the common unit that we know? Like for example, we have gram represented by letter G, or we have milligram represented by mg, or we can have liters, okay, or we can have meters, or we can have milliliters, all of those are units. And what about followed by the chemical? And this is usually written in a chemical formula. So what are some of the chemicals that we have? For example, we have carbon, that's the carbon element, or we can have water. There are endless variations of chemicals that we can work with. So keep that in mind, okay? Or sometimes we can just have carbon dioxide, that's a common one, or oxygen. There you go, a little bit more for chemical. Now, what is the term that we use to describe the relationship between two different measurements? The term is called a conversion factor. A conversion factor relates, okay? Think of the term relationship. What does relationship mean? Well, in mathematical terms, when you relate one thing to another, they are equivalent to each other. That means they are equal to each other. So keep that in mind, okay? And that's how they are related. So relate two different measurements. Notice how I use the term different measurements. They have the same values. Wait a minute, how can two different measurements have the same values? Isn't that impossible? Well, if we look at the unit carefully, and we look at the number carefully, or even the chemical carefully, let's look at something very basic. We have one dollar, okay? And that's equal to 100 pennies. Notice how these are two different measurements, right? And how do you know? First of all, the number is completely different. But in most cases, this is where it's tricky, is that the unit right there is different. Because the unit also have a values to it. Like for instance, one penny is a lot less than one dollar, okay? So because the unit are different, now you have the opportunity of having two different measurements that are equivalent, or in this case, they are equal to each other. Another common one is one foot equal to how many inches? 12 inches, right? There you go. So those are the possibilities of having two different measurements that are equal to each other. Now, of course, in reality, there are endless of conversion factors. But this allows us to understand that there is measurement or there are measurements that are equivalent to each other. And that's how we have the term conversion factor. Now, the beautiful thing about conversion factor is that it can be written as a ratio. Now, think of math term. A ratio can be written as a fraction, right? And of course, a number on top and a number on the bottom. So that's a fraction. And that's only possible when we write a fraction. And when we have a fraction, that is only possible when the two numbers are equivalent to each other. So keep that in mind, are they related together? So in this case, they are two equivalent measurements. Let's look at one example. So let's look at this example. We have one dollar written as a ratio equal to a hundred penny. Notice how they are equal values. When you have two numbers that are the same on top and bottom into a fraction line, let's look at number two divided by two. What do you get? Of course, one. How about five divided by five? Notice how the values are the same, it's equal to one. So in this case, because they are the same values, they are equal to one. And why is that important? Because now we can actually write 100 penny equal to one dollar. So we can actually manipulate the location of the unit. 
because they are the same values and simplify equal to 1. Or let's look at this one where we have 1 foot equal to 12 inch. And that can be simplified equal to 1, right? So in this case, we can have 12 inch on top equal to 1 foot on the bottom. Isn't that beautiful? Now let's look at the task for this activity. Determine the possible conversion factor or factors from the given set of statements or statements. Well, in this case, let's look at this one. There are a hundred pennies in a dollar. Notice how we have a hundred pennies in a dollar when you see the article A that represented as one. So 100 pennies. And notice how penny is written in plural form, but when we write a conversion factor, we try to keep everything singular. So that way there are less letters that we have to focus on. And it's equal to one dollar. Isn't that easy? Let's try another one. We have 1,000 milliliter equal to 1 liter. Oh, that's even easier. That is even easier. 1 ml equal to 1. Oh, notice how this is liter, right? Can we abbreviate liter? Of course, there's a letter L, so we put 1 L. Because we want to simplify our math. We don't want to write too many letters because it's going to make us confused later on, okay? And then here we have 1 mole of carbon. The unit, of course, is mole. Now, carbon, can we abbreviate carbon? Yes, it's represented by the letter C. And we have, has 12 grams of carbon. Gram, what letter we use to represent grams? G. And carbon represented by C. So one mole, there are no abbreviations for mole. Actually, the abbreviation is M-O-L. Well, what's the point of doing that? Let's just put M-O-L-E. So that equals one mole of carbon. Well, so we have one mole of carbon equal to 12 point grams of carbon. Isn't that nice? Easy, okay? And let's try another one. At any temperature, one mole of H2O has 6.023 times 10 to 23rd molecules of water or H2O. So we can ignore that. Now we just write this. One mole of H2O equal to has, okay? When you see the word has, that means it's equivalent to in this case, 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd molecule of H2O. Oh, this could be singular form. Again, my mistake. There you go. Let's try another one. At 0 Celsius and 1 atmosphere pressure, we have 1 mole of carbon dioxide gas has, of course, that's equal sign, 22.4 liter of gas of CO2. So we have 1 mole. CO2 equal to, notice we can shorten this to L, and 22.4 liter of CO2. Isn't that easy? Last one. One mole of water has two moles of hydrogen. So this is already abbreviated already. Hydrogen can be H. So we have one mole of H2O equal to two moles of H. And that's all we have to do. Just make sure when you type on the computer, make sure you type them together. Do not space, okay? And that's all we have to do in terms of defining a measurement and how different measurements are related in terms of a conversion factor. Go to streamlinead.com to download ready to use online practice with immediate feedback. You don't have to make copies. All of your student work is auto graded. This will save you a lot of paper and hours of grading. The links are in the description below. Thank you.